Hi there, welcome to BSF Recovery Team. No, that's not a big lopey cam in the wrecker now. Still the same torker cam I built it with. We still need to set the proper ignition timing. With the timing light, I can see that we're only about three degrees before top dead center. And that's with the vacuum advance still hooked up. Definitely not where we want to be. For most mildly built small blocks that are going to be run on the street, the initial timing or base timing is usually somewhere between 10 and 14 degrees. This engine in the wrecker seems to work best at about 12 degrees before top dead center. Base timing or initial advance is set with the vacuum advance disconnected, the vacuum line plugged, and the engine at idle below 1000 RPM. That's to ensure that the flyweights or centrifugal advance is at its home position. As we advance the timing, our idle slows out and increases. We want to make sure we keep that idle under a thousand for our base timing or our initial advance. We move or rotate the distributor until we get the setting we want. We gotta tighten down the distributor now without moving it. All right, now we'll recheck. Go ahead and start it up. That's about 18. We must have uh, bumped the distributor while we were tightening it up. Time to try again. Okay, I think we got it this time. Start it up. Twelve degrees, I think that'll do. Shut it up. Old school timing light. That's the tool to use. Well, things under the hood are looking really good. I think we can put the bumper on and Mara can put the grill in. Well, we're almost ready. We still got to replace the stub shaft, but I think that's the last thing on the list. In order to do the next step on fixing the wrecker, uh, the outer axle shaft or the stub shaft, we got to collect some parts. Now, I have the stub shaft in the garage. That's not a problem, but uh, I'm fresh out of lockouts. So guess where we get to go to get a lockout? That's right, the boneyard. Looks like Dusty wants to come say hi. hi come say hi, Dusty. Hi, oh yeah, I have something in my hand. That's a tool bag. Hi, baby. There's the rest of them. Yeah, he can follow. It's all right. So we'll head out back here and see if we can find a Dana 60 lockout. I know I have a few of them back here. It's a matter of which ones will come off. He's following me, just like a puppy dog. Baby, baby, 
Where are you going? Well, you stopped. Wait a minute. I need to go over there. <laughs> okay. I don't think any of these axles here have any lockouts on them. Nope. So we'll head over to uh, we'll head over to a couple of the one tons here and see what we can uh, steal. So maybe we can get one off the old trailer hauler here. So this time I brought a bag of tools with me. I suppose some of you are probably wondering why, because the wrecker is an off-road tow truck and very seldom sees the road, why I'm putting a lockout back in it instead of a drive slug. Well, it's because even though it spends most of its life off-road, there are times when, uh, when we do have to drive it at speed. And I'd just as soon be able to unlock the front drive line to keep all of it from spinning while we're going at speed. Namely, because we have a Tom Woods offset U-joint in our front drive shaft in order to give me the clearance I need for the lift. Always got to be one stubborn one. Turn your tool on. I turned it on. That's good. Actually, it's off. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. Because we're, we're taking it off. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, it's not just the cap we need. We need the rest of it, too. So that means you get to pull a snap ring here. And the outer ring. Well, and the weather today is only 36 degrees with a gust of wind of 20 miles an hour. Oh, Mara's giving us the weather report. Yeah, it's only 36 degrees. Let's do that in front of the camera. It's only 36 degrees with the wind chill or wind power or whatever people want to call it at 20 miles an hour it's cold that's what we need last weekend it was what 65 last weekend it was 65 degrees it was really nice now it's turned cold again all right we got what we need and uh last time we were out here somebody asked about the dodge uh, it's just a three-quarter ton Dodge that uh, actually one of the fans gave me uh, had a camper on it. We were going to use the camper, uh, but the camper didn't survive the unloading process very well. The truck's all rusted out. It does have a 360 in it that runs uh, training and transfer case, and axles are good. So, so we haven't scrapped it out yet. And this Jeep right here is kind of a unique Jeep. Uh, Years ago, I got it. It used to belong to uh, uh, Wisconsin Park Service. So it's a commercial CJ5. That means it's got the split windshield uh, with the hinge on the top so the windshield can vent forward. That's kind of unique for the Jeeps. And it also has a PTO in the back. They used to use it for mowing some parks. Anyway, someday we might bring that in the shop and uh, resurrect it. Well, that's all for now. We're going to uh, get these parts and uh, head back to Amory Chevrolet and uh, get the wrecker finished up so we can go to Utah. Thanks for watching, BSF Recovery Team. Keep wheeling, be safe out there, and maybe we'll see you out at Easter Jeep Safari.